Hello and welcome back to Projector at LFF. If you missed the previous installments, be sure to check out the playlist. On this episode, Spike Lee collaborates with David Byrne of the Talking Heads to bring his stage show American Utopia to the screen. A live recording of David Byrne's hit Broadway show featuring Byrne alongside 11 musicians as they sing tracks from his album of the same name, as well as past hits from his solo career in his Talking Heads days, while Byrne explores how we understand the world and connect with each other through it. In 1984, the band Talking Heads and filmmaker Jonathan Demme collaborated for what is generally considered to be one of, if not the best concert films of all time, Stop Making Sense. Now, 36 years later, former Talking Heads frontman David Byrne collaborates with another brilliant filmmaker, that of Spike Lee, to bring his current tour, American Utopia, though he's been roaming all across the country ever since the album dropped in 2018 to film, which will air on HBO Max in the US. And Burns tour was enormously successful and critically praised. This performance was actually filmed on Broadway and there were plans to bring American Utopia back on tour once again in 2020 starting from September but of course due to Covid that got scuttled. So in its place we now have the release of this film. And you might think that a collaboration between Lee and Byrne is a somewhat unusual one at first glance. This is actually Lee's second film in 2020 following the Netflix war drama The Five Bloods. And certainly they've got big shoes or is that big suits to fill considering the reputation of the late Demi's film. But in terms of collaborations it turns out to be a fantastic one for both. Byrne was originally born in Scotland before he emigrated to Canada and the US, and as such, there's always been this outsider spirit to him, especially in his views of American culture, which always seem a little bit distant and alienated. And you can definitely see this in his songs and in his stage persona, but that should never be confused for being disenfranchised. In fact, far from it, American Utopia is very much a repost to that kind of thinking. It's a show that encourages us to be engaged. It's an idea that's established right from the very opening where Byrne walks out on stage carrying a brain in his hand and he talks about how as babies we have these thousands upon thousands of connections in our minds but as adults we have far fewer of them. As we grow older we select and prioritize the ones that we want to keep and in turn those make up the people that we become. It's an idea that's reiterated in the stage design. The stage is surrounded by these chains that are lit in ways that make them resemble the neural pathways of the mind that make up these connections. And it's a show that encourages us to be more open-minded and especially to the idea of change. It's a show that's very much a response to small-mindedness and how pathetic that is in a lot of ways. And it's a show which very much encourages us to consider the idea of our humanity. It's something that Byrne talks about in the Margs Between Songs. Why is it that we're drawn to other people but not in the same way as, say, other objects. What is it that makes us want to form those kind of connections? And can we re-establish those things? Can we reawaken what we'd previously dismissed and become different people? Can we move forward? And you can see this diversity of thought all across the rest of the show, be it in the song choices, which are extremely varied in terms of their genres, their influences, and their sounds, but also in Burns Band itself. There are members from as far flung as France and Brazil and they all have their different styles to bring. They all influence the music being performed at any given moment and while Burns name is above the title it feels more like an ensemble especially in the way that members will get towards the front and have their moment in the spotlight. It feels very open in that way and that feels very much by design. Burn has cultivated a very minimalist staging for the performance in that all those things that you would normally see at concerts like drum kits or big speakers, all of them have been taken off the stage. It has been cleared of 
everything but the most essential thing which is the performers themselves and so that means that they are free to roam around as possible and free to move and dance even the percussive members are wearing their instruments like band members and that means that a lot of it does have that kind of marching band aesthetic but what makes it so fantastic is that it feels so liberated so free so exciting and it feels like there's so much energy in the room burn maybe in his 60s but he shows a tremendous amount of physicality all throughout the performance and that is what spike lee's direction really takes advantage of because that means that his cameras all across the stage and also above it can pick and choose the best moments for the camera to cut to really this concert film is a masterclass in editing we always follow the energy in the room at that time and in that way you really get a sense of the excitement of the performance and of the performers and certainly i think that in a way it manages to transcend not just being theatrical but make it feel cinematic at the same time certainly i can't think of many films which give you the sort of really big audience feeling as this one does and really i think that that is something to be cherished especially in the time of covid19 where of course we can't have theatrical performances and so there is a sort of poignancy to that but it is really great to be amongst the crowd. You really get that feeling. And the crowd during this recording is extremely excitable, maybe even a little bit too much so at times, because occasionally they do holler at Byrne while he's doing one of his monologues and cutting off his train of thought. But generally speaking, it adds a tremendous amount of charge to the performance, especially when you, like they, realize that Byrne is playing the opening notes to one of his big hits, like Once in a Lifetime, which is my personal favourite of Burns' songs. You can feel the tension and anticipation in the crowd or them joining in with him playing Burning Down the House or another song like Everybody's Coming to My House. And in that song, it especially feels like a party. Everyone is having a good time and it just feels supremely inclusive. In a year where we don't have concerts, it feels like it really has been brought to to your front living room. It's also a show that's unabashedly political. There are several instances where Byrne encourages the audience to vote, not just in the presidential election, but in local elections as well, which have historically low turnout. It's something that Byrne feels so strongly about, he actually set up a table outside for people to register to vote if they so wish. Likewise, at the end of the credits, there is actually a web link for you too to register to vote if you so wish. It's one of several moments that allude to the current state of the world right now. During one of the songs, there is actually a moment where they all take the knee while a picture of Colin Kaepernick is projected behind them. But by far the most powerful of these is their performance of Janelle Monet's protest song, Hell You Tom Out. And that is where Lee's directorial influence can also be most felt. As they perform the song, and they call out their names, Lee actually cuts away from the stage to people holding up images of those victims of police violence, often being carried by relatives and family members in a way that is supremely moving and only gets more poignant at the end of the song when Lee adds the current 2020 victims of police shootings after this was recorded, as well as numerous others. But this isn't a show that invites us to feel defeated or apathetic. It instead encourages us to embrace our ability to change, to improve things, and to always remain curious above all else. Admittedly, the fact that it's so tied to our current political moment may mean that the movie actually dates quite quickly, but I do think that it works right now. I think that as a movie for this present time, it certainly feels extremely topical 
and relevant, and certainly it feels like the movie that we kind of need right now. I really enjoy David Byrne's American Utopia. Admittedly, I'm not actually that much of a big music fan myself, but I still found myself won over. There's an infectious spirit to this entire performance that is just captivating from start to finish. There is so much enthusiasm on stage that it's hard not to be swept up by it. It's both a terrific example of Byrne's showmanship, along with the rest of his band, but also of Lee's abilities as a filmmaker and how he manages to elevate that performance even further. It's that rare kind of movie that not only highlights what's great about theatrical performances and that communal experience and manages to get that to translate across the screen, but also shows how that, that can be cinematic as well. It feels like a free-flowing, invitation to party and in a year where we haven't had much theater or concerts it feels like the kind of thing that we all honestly need to perk us up. It's certainly a bright flash of optimism. David Byrne's American Utopia will be released on HBO Max in the US on October 17th and will be released theatrically internationally by Universal Pictures. If you like this video and you want to support my work, then you can do so over at my Patreon, where you can see my reviews early, among other perks, including access to my Discord server, but until next time, I'm Matthew Buck, fading out.